Hey, what's going on YouTube? So it's Nathan back here with another one, bringing to you some hidden features on the Amazon Fire Stick. It's basically all of the settings. If you've never actually looked in the settings, there's a, actually a lot of stuff in there that's pretty uh, handy and tips that you can use on the daily uh, to you know get the best experience with your Amazon Fire Stick. So we're gonna make our way over to the settings, and then uh, the setting that you're all familiar with that you see me in almost every video is the, uh, the My Fire TV setting which uh, pretty much allows you to access the third-party add-ons, the ones that normally give you the free movies and TV shows. But I'm going to go ahead and walk through each setting with you and show you what benefits it has for you. All right, so we'll start with the display setting, display settings and sounds. So let me show you what's in here first. Um, first, we have the, uh, the screensaver, but that's not relevant. We'll go into display settings. And then in here, uh, this is very relevant to you. Uh, you have your video resolution. It's set to auto, so sometimes your Fire Stick may go to 720p at some times, depending on the content that you're playing. But if you want to specify uh, just making it 1080p all the time, this is where you would specify that at. Um, if we continue down, you can match original frame rate, uh, which is fine. Uh, you can boost it up, which will kind of make things appear quicker on the screen and then you have calibrate display which if your TV is off centered for any reason this is where you would change that so you can use these arrows the up down left right uh, to kind of minimize the TV or maximize it depending on if it's fitting perfectly and all your apps are fitting perfectly on your screen once you find the perfect setting for your TV, you just click accept, or if you're unsure, just click on the reset button and it'll go back to the, the way it was originally. And down below the dynamic range setting, uh, by default it's already set to HDR, which is what we want. The other setting is adaptive, but HDR is better than adaptive, so we'll just keep it on HDR. If we go back and click on the audio, Audio does give us a little bit of options about the surround sound and then advanced auto settings and then navigation sounds. The navigation sounds is the clicking noise that you hear. So if you turn this off and then you start to maneuver, you won't hear any clicking sounds anymore. A lot of people don't like the clicking sound. Some people find it annoying. I like it personally, so I just keep mine on, but that's where you would turn it off at. If we continue down, you have surround sound settings. I just keep this on best available, which it is on by default. And then uh, these additional ones, always Dolby Digital Plus and Dolby Digital, those are not offered on all types of content depending on where you're watching it. If you watch it on the Amazon Fire Stick and it comes from the Amazon Fire Stick, then it probably will play in Dolby Digital. But if you watch it on third party apps like, uh, you know, Cinema and all the other ones, it probably won't play any audio if for any reason it doesn't offer dopely digital so keep that in mind just keep your setting on best available and that's perfectly fine we go into the advanced audio settings and then it says here you have a volume leveler if you want to stay consistent with all your apps uh, like netflix hulu probably all the other ones that you watch movies on you keep this on and it'll deliver the same type of audio quality across the board for all the apps. Uh, I just keep it off because I don't have any issues with the volume. It sounds perfectly fine for me. And then there's this dialogue enhancer where you can enable this and it'll make sure the vocals are much more clear when you're watching content from your device. But I keep mine off. Once again, I don't have any issues with the dialogue or the vocals. But if you do, turn that feature on and it'll make it sound a little bit more crisper. All right, so the next setting we come down to enable display mirroring. This setting allows you to stream everything from your iPhone or Android device to your Amazon Fire Stick. You just have to click on enable device mirroring and then it'll bring you to this screen. You connect your Note 8. I'm on the Note 8, so my setting that I have to turn on is Smart View. And then once I turn that feature on, it'll allow me to connect to the Fire TV device. So it'll do this loading screen and then your phone screen will pop up and then from there I'm just gonna go to the notepad and tell you that I'm on my phone just to confirm um, but yeah you can do that anything on your phone will now be on your TV screen you can kinda show family like photos and stuff on your uh, phone on the big screen you can play music you can do everything that you would do on your phone but now it's on your TV and playing through your TV speakers 
And also the best feature about this is when you turn your phone to the side, the screen also on the, the TV screen, the Fire TV also turns the screen to the landscape view. Okay, so I've turned off the display mirroring setting. Now we're on to the next setting. And by default, I believe this is turned on depending on what settings you pick uh, out of the box when you first turn in your Fire TV. But this feature allows you to turn on your TV uh, through the Alexa mic and also if you hit the power button on your Fire TV 4K edition remote, it'll also turn on your TV depending on which TV you have. All right, so we're making our way over to application settings. We'll start with App Store. The App Store is the store that you use when you use the magnifying glass on the home screen when you start to search for apps. This in here uh, pretty much asks you, do you want to keep your apps up to date? By default, it's turned on. You can definitely keep them up to date. I recommend that. Then we have our external links. This is just external links that come from the App Store. You can leave this on. I prefer it just stay on apps before opening it'll just be in your favor whether you you'll have the option to decide whether you want to open things or not so we'll just continue the next one we have in-app purchases if you have kids or someone who normally uses the fire tv more than you and they're always using random apps that have purchase and app purchases in them you can turn this feature off by default it's turned on because um, they want you to spin but if you don't want it turned on, just turn it off and then, you know, they'll have to get permission from you and it just won't work. It won't go through. Um, you can manage your subscriptions, but you have to do that on Amazon.com. Uh, the notifications piece, no one really gets notifications on this device. At least I don't very often. Um, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. You'll just leave those on by default. But if you do experience notifications, just turn it off. There's nothing wrong with that. And then the cloud apps, that's perfectly fine as well. It's just basically allowing you to uh, not be seeing apps that you already have installed when you're searching through the app store. So that's fine. We'll just keep that off for the organization of it. And then we'll go back and continue. Okay, so next up we have Amazon Photos. In here, you can specify a pin code as well. And then this is using the Amazon Photos app. You may be familiar with that icon on the left-hand side. And you can have the ability to allow guests to connect to your Fire TV device so they can show photos through their photo app onto your screen. Um, game circle, everything is fine in there. You can leave everything set to default. And then we have manage installed applications on the right-hand side. If you're not aware, it does show your internal storage space. So you have 5.28 gigs available total, and then I have 3.17 gigs of 5.28 available. So I have about three gigs available because I deleted a lot of apps that I don't use. So you can go in here and you can delete apps that you don't use anymore. For instance, uh, you can't delete any of the Amazon apps like Amazon Photos, the App Store, things like that. Um, this Amazon shopping app, I downloaded this from the app store. Um, I can uninstall this if I want it. I can clear data if I don't want any of my search results showing. I can clear data. It'll just basically start the app over from scratch as if I just downloaded it from start or from, from scratch. So, and you can also force stop it if it's running. All apps run in the background. So if you want to come in here and force stop, that's perfectly fine. All right, so we'll continue through here, and each setting does have a lot to offer, a lot of stuff that you would never know unless you checked in there and knew exactly what you were looking for. Um, but next we have equipment control. It's set to automatic by default. So we'll go ahead and check that out and see what's in here. Um, you can set it to off, and you can set it to manual if you wanted to, but this is it, get, it just gives you a lot of access to your TV, your audio equipment, like if you got sound bars, if you want to turn your TV off and on, you want to switch uh, input off and on, this will allow it. But keep it on automatic because it will provide the best experience for you. Then we have manage equipment. This is where we, I'm going to skip add equipment for now. I'm going to show you that last. But under the TV option, you have the volume increments. This is pretty much for when you say Alexa set volume. For Alexa to change the volume, you always have to say a number 1 through 10 or a 12, and that will determine how loud it'll be and how you know low it'll be. 
And that number is also determined by which increment uh, number you have as your max. Then we have our infrared options. We go in here. We I'm just going to leave everything set in here by default, but if you wanted to change anything uh, for your IR blaster, um, my TV is a Samsung TV, so I have to use the Samsung profile, which is already done straight out the box, so you don't need to change any of this unless you got a new TV and you wanted to change some settings. Next we have the power controls options in here. The only reason I would say change this is if for any reason your TV is not responding to the signals when you press the power button or if you say Alexa turn the TV power on and off. You just play around with these settings and try to get it to respond. Uh, but that's the only time you would come in here and play with these settings otherwise you would leave them on default. Then we have our input change options. This part's pretty cool as well. Um, so if we click on here, uh, right now it's set to cycle through, but you can change these options. Um, so right now, if you say Alexa switch input, it'll give you the option to pop up your TV menu and allow you to change your input manually. That's what I have mine set through, or if I continue to say Alexa change input, it'll continue to swipe through the input options but you can change it to the remote key uh, option so you can change it to navigate up, navigate up and enter, navigate down or whatever you would like it to be or if you want Alexa to just control it you just leave it on cycle through that's perfectly fine and there's also a setting I'm going to show you after this that kind of piggybacks on that but if you want to change your TV, that's where you would change it there. Um, but we're not going to change it because we want our TV set to Samsung because that's the one I'm using. So if we go back, we'll go down to Fire TV. These are the settings. Um, if you want to change your HDMI import, I have my Fire TV in HDMI 1. And you can specify which input you want your TV or your Fire TV to be in. That, that comes in handy on the next steps. So your power timing here, this is when you say Alexa power on your TV. This is how long you want it to kind of stay in limbo before it does turn on the TV. Leave it on zero. It's set to zero by default. That way it's instant when you say power on the TV or click your power button on your Fire Stick remote to turn your TV on. Also the two settings right here, the power on input and the home button down below, we'll just leave both of those on default as well. All right, so now we're back. Now we'll click on Add Equipment. This is probably the best feature in the equipment controls. And this is the best feature mainly because it allows you to connect so many different devices. You got Xbox, Roku, Apple TV, a Blu-ray player, DVD player, DVR, game console, satellite, cable TV, and uh, regular TV as well. So I have a game console in here. You can specify whether you want to connect your Xbox to it. Um, this comes in handy because when you do set it up, um, I'm, I haven't set it up and I won't show you in this video, but in a different video, if you request it down below in the comments, I can show you how to set it up. But this will give you the option. I'll just go through it briefly here. If you click next, it'll ask which HDMI port is your Xbox uh, on one. Um, so basically, you have to specify that. So mine would be an HDMI, HDMI 2 if my Fire Stick is already in HDMI 1 and you specify that and once you do you'll then be able to say Alexa turn on Xbox or Alexa switch input to Xbox and as long as your Xbox is turned on it'll switch to that input as simple as that and depending on your TV you will be limited on HDMI ports so if you have some of these devices go ahead and plug some of them up and set them up because if you don't want to reach for another remote, you can have your Alexa remote in your hand and you could use everything straight to your Alexa remote. And also just a quick tip, even if you have an Alexa Echo or any type of other Alexa Echo or device that accepts voice command, you can do it from there as well and it'll just load up on your screen. Under the live TV settings, there's not much in here to uh, choose from. A lot of this stuff comes from Pluto TV or if you have any other live TV subscriptions on your Amazon Fire Stick, it'll just show in there and you'll be able allowed to adjust the parental controls if for any reason you needed them. Also to piggyback on the equipment, the controllers and Bluetooth devices, 
settings that you can enable in here uh, come in handy tremendously just like the uh, voice command input settings that you can change for your game consoles and soundbars so if in here um, basically you can check the battery level on your fire tv remote it'll just say okay um, and then you can also add a second remote if you have an additional remote you can add it here that way there's two remotes connected instead of one in case you lose another you can add game controllers in here if you just want to control your amazon fire stick completely from a game console controller just turn your controller on put it in discovery mode it'll pop up right there it'll say xbox controller you then just click on it and then it'll connect your controller to your amazon fire tv it says pairing the controller and once it's completed it'll say connected all right so it's paired it says connected down below and then you can maneuver using your uh, your xbox controller or any other type of controller that's bluetooth uh, playstation controllers you know any type of controller so the other Bluetooth devices section in here allows you, so say for instance you want to connect some Bluetooth headphones like your Beats by Dre or AirPods or any other type of Bluetooth device headphones, you can connect it here, you can connect keyboards and mouses, any Bluetooth device you can pretty much connect it to your Fire Stick device. Let me show you, I have headphones that I'm going to pair to this device. Uh, this is, comes in handy if you don't want to disturb anybody but you still want to watch TV. And all you have to do is put your device in discovery mode. It'll pop up here. I have Beats by Wireless or Power Beats Wireless. And it pops up there. You click on it and then pairs your device to your Fire Stick TV. And then it'll say connected. And you will get this additional prompt uh, basically talking about frequencies. And it's saying if you do use wireless headphones, just make sure you put your wireless on 5 gigahertz. You don't necessarily need to sometimes it just can fluctuate and mess up your wireless connection but if that happens just change your connection to a five gigahertz um, and I, if you're not familiar with that let me know in the comments i could show you so we continue over to the alexa setting this will allow us to just get more familiar with what alexa is capable of the alexa app itself is on mobile phones on iphones androids you can download it from the play store or the apple store and then you have things to try. These are all the default commands that you can try. Um, so the nicest one I like is get updates on the weather and it'll just pop up a weather menu in front of you just so you can see the weather for the entire week. And then they also have other suggested commands. Next we have our preference settings. A lot of the settings in here uh, you have parental controls which allows you to restrict access to you know anyone under 17 you can do that there I have mine turned off because I don't have any people that I would like to restrict but we'll continue the device privacy settings if you want to turn off collect app data usage so like if you're shopping on Amazon through your fire TV you can turn that data off you can turn off any data like if you're downloading certain applications you don't want anybody to know turn that off and it'll keep you anonymous as far as your internet base ads, I like uh, targeted ads because I like to, you know, look for stuff that I'm actually looking for. I like to get ads on stuff that I'm actually looking for. But a lot of people don't like that because it's kind of tracking what you say and what you're looking at all day and then giving you an ad based off of it. If you don't want that, just turn it off um, and then it won't give you any ads based on what you're looking for. Data monitoring is set to off by default notification settings if you want to block pop-ups and unwanted notifications you turn it off there your feature content here um, these are those videos those banners that play on the home screen of the Amazon Fire Stick if you don't want any video to play automatically you can just turn that off here and it'll just show a still image of what that item is that it's showing you as for the audio down below, if you, the, if you still want the video to play but you don't want any audio to play with it, you can turn it off here. Um, I know a lot of people you know, just want to see the video and they don't want to worry about the audio, that blast through the TV screen. So you just turn it off there if you want it. I don't mind, so I leave mine turned on. Uh, sync recent content, you can just continue through that. Uh, location, metrics, 
that's perfectly fine. Metric units is for if you're overseas and you want to change your metric units. My Fire TV settings, these are the settings where you go in and you adjust your third party add-ons, but we're familiar with that already. And then your accessibility, if you need accessibility, you would go here to turn it on, like your closed caption. You can adjust the text color, the text background color, the windows background, just so you can get a clear image or idea of what the closed captions is saying on the screen. Then if you don't want closed caption, you can turn on voice view. So voice anything view that you highlight voice over, view, it'll reader. read voice it out to you. On. If reading speed, you just need that, um, you need it read out to you, this is where you would turn view. that on. on. Also, if you want to view things much bigger on the screen, turn on this screen magnifier and you can zoom in very quickly. And once you're done, you can then zoom out by uh, turning it off. And then the next setting is high contrast text. If you want to turn off the high contrast text, you can just turn that off and it won't show yellow anymore. It'll just show black and white. All right, so that's it. That's all I have for you for this video. Those are all the hidden features that you may or may not have known about. I appreciate you watching this video. Give it a like, comment, subscribe. Thank you once again, and you have a great day. Peace. I remember when Plus first told me take a peek in the shoe box. Introduce me to them bands, hit me to the plan, I'm nah, making more. Me out of Desi Drip, switching phone whips, let the work do the work for me. Only call it hustle if your profit doubles. Otherwise, you would work a beat. Little rest up in God's hands. Wise words from a wise man. Can you tell the time turning 25 into five bands? Nigga, I can. Then that five started jumping, flip the 10, and that 10 turned to 20. Now everything that I want is paid for. That's the life I was made for.